Well, welcome. This is the second video in a multi-video series dealing with uh, multiple tonguing techniques. This second video is on double tonguing. Uh, the third video will also be on double tonguing. This particular video will focus on practice methods for double tonguing. Well, there are two approaches to how to practice double tonguing. One method is to practice notes as short as possible, and the other is to practice notes as long as possible. The short note method is advocated by Don Chrislieb, who's a bassoonist out in the Los Angeles area, and uh, this is an article here I've referenced by Charles Lipp, and also by Arthur Weisberg, who um, formerly taught at Yale and at Indiana University. And this is found in his book, The Art of Wind Playing. The advantages to the short note method of practicing articulation, double, uh, double tonguing, is that it features swift transitions from front to back articulation. And you'll have to go back to video one if you've not yet seen that. Front articulation was with a T, a D, or an L, uh, some place where the uh, tongue contacts the reed, some sort of consonant that contacts the reed. And a back articulation is at the roof of the mouth uh, with perhaps a K or a G or, or some sort of uh, consonant uh, which brushes the tongue against the roof of the mouth. The um, advantage of this type of articulation approach is that you're featuring swift transitions. You're quickly going from one consonant to the next. And as a consequence, you may be able to attain quick articulation speeds more rapidly than the other method. Let's have a look at how that looks again. So uh, with the front tongue, the tongue contacts the reed here. The transition period where the tone is actually produced, the air comes up here around the tongue and then out the, uh, out the reed. Transition period is as short as possible with quickly the tongue moving to the roof of the mouth, closing off the air supply in sort of a K or a G syllable up here. Now the short note approach is one I don't advocate. The approach I do advocate for practicing uh, double tongue and the other multiple tonguings is the long note approach. Uh, I've, I've looked in the literature and I haven't found anything printed about the long note approach. Uh, so it, it may be my own writings, but I'm, I'm certain there are others that are using that uh, that just are not in print and uh, I, I can't claim to have come up with this approach by myself. I, I think I've actually learned it from other teachers. So here are the advantages of the long note approach. First off, the emphasis is on clean and quick articulations. That is that the consonants used in this articulation are as light and quick as possible. Next, there's attention to the quality of the tone produced. And this is something I think is very important, is the tone quality should not suffer with more rapid articulation. You should still have a wonderful quality of sound, just like you would legato, uh, legato notes. You need to have the same quality of sound for staccato notes or rapidly tongued notes. Uh, next, and this is particularly important for the bassoonist, is many bassoonists uh, do tongue and articulate with uh, wild jaw motions or movement in the jaw. And by concentrating on very legato tonguing, this minimizes those jaw motions, hopefully eliminating it altogether. Uh, the other thing I like about this particular, uh, this particular approach is that it more closely simulates single tonguing techniques. And we'll look at that a little bit later. But in particular, it varies the note lengths based on the tempo or the speed of those notes the short note articulation approach does not vary the length of those notes. And I think that is a real disadvantage.
So again, in review, your tongue contacts the reed in the same place with those front consonants, but the transition period is kept for a much longer time, a much longer period of time. You quickly brush the tongue up against the roof of the mouth for the other, the other note, and then back. So in this type of articulation, that is very quick, and this is very quick. You know, the K and the T, you're, you're keeping this transitional area. So let's, let's compare again the two types of articulation, and let's give an example in a slow tempo. So in a slow tempo, with the fast or the real short note articulation, you're going tick, and I'm using the E or ick, ick, ick vowel because that, that is very suitable for oboe players uh, and works well for bassoonists. The vowel ah may occasionally work better in certain ranges for bassoonists such as talk, cop, something like that. But let's do tick, tick. Can you hear, see how quickly those work? And what you would do is you keep your air supply going through this whole this whole exercise. So tick, tick. I kept the air, I kept the pressure uh, coming here. Now in this long note exercise, the emphasis is on keeping these open so it's T I'm sorry, I didn't do it quick enough. T key T key ta ka ta ka see i'm i'm making these consonants very quick and the note is sounding as long as possible so that's that's really the difference there so here's the slow tempo notice at a faster tempo the length of these notes for that um, the short note articulation is the same but the length for the slow note articulation, did I say slow up here? For the fast note articulation is the same, but the slow note articulated notes are shorter. And this more precisely imitates what you would do with your single tongue. Generally, you will uh, vary the length of the notes according to the tempo. So you can proceed to the third video now, and I've got some practice exercises for double tonguing. God bless you.